Good day subscribers. Today we're going to be doing something new. Recently I received a comment on one of my videos asking me a whole list of questions. So I thought it might be interesting to do a video on a Q&A. Let's get started. So like I said, this video comes inspired from a comment that I got in a previous video. And this comment was long. I went back and I tried to find it and I couldn't find it anymore, but I did have the email from YouTube that I'd received the comment. So I was able to break it down and kind of go through each thing. So I thought it might be fun to go through each of the questions and answer them right here so you guys can see my answers and so that the commenter can see my answers. He broke his questions up into three sections a general section, a time management section, and a section that's specific to how I'm attacking the OMS CS program. In this video, we're going to go through the general questions. So the first general question is, have I ever been to Georgia Tech? And no, I haven't. I've never actually set foot on the campus, but I do plan on being in Georgia around the January-February time period of next year, and I might be going there just to check out the campus a little bit. I'll be in Georgia for a different reason, but if I'm in Atlanta and I'm around there, why not check it out? Next, can OMS CS students go to Georgia Tech and visit the campus? And from what I've looked up in my research, it seems like Georgia Tech is just an open state campus, and so anybody can go and visit Georgia Tech and walk around the campus. Now there will be certain buildings that are student buildings or faculty buildings that will be sectioned off just for the people who either work at Georgia Tech or go to Georgia Tech. But as an OMS CS student, you are able to order a buzz card, which is Georgia Tech's version of an identifier. It's similar to a driver's license. And you can use that card to go into the dining hall or go into really anything within Georgia Tech. And I'll leave a link to the description on how to get that in the comments below. It does cost $33 though, so that is something to think about if you're in the OMS CS program. I personally did not order one of these cards just because it wasn't worth the $33 for me. The third general question was asking me about my timeline for completing the OMS CS program. The exact question he asked was, was I planning on taking more than two and a half years to finish the program? But I'm going to reword that a little bit and just say, how long are you taking to finish the program? So for me, I am working and in the OMS CS program, along with, if you've watched my past videos, you know, my background isn't in CS. Because of that combination, I'm actually only taking one class a semester, and that is my plan for the foreseeable future. With that schedule, because you need 10 courses to finish the OMS CS program, it'll take me three years plus one semester, so three and a third years. Unless I do something where I end up skipping a semester, or I do something where I end up taking two courses in one semester, which I don't plan on doing either, that'll be my timeline for completing the OMS CS program. The fourth question is, is it possible to finish the program in a shorter timeline? And this is kind of a complicated question. Definitely, yes, you can finish the program in a different timeline, but there's going to be a minimum and a maximum amount of time that you can get through the program, as in a minimum amount of semesters that'll get you through the program and a maximum amount of semesters that'll get you through the program. The minimum is calculated by the maximum number of courses you can take a semester for each semester. The way we do this is you're able to take a maximum of two courses in the fall, two courses in the spring, and one course in the summer. If you do that for two years, you'll have your 10 courses and you'll be done with the program. So the minimum amount of time to finish the program would be two years. Now this does come with a little asterisk, which is you are able to request the ability to take three courses in the spring and the fall, but you need special approval to be able to do it. So in that case, you could finish it before the two years, but for most people, in most cases, the minimum amount of time is gonna be two years. Now the maximum is a bit harder to calculate. Within Georgia Tech, specifically the OMSCS program, there are a few rules in terms of how to stay enrolled 
and taking classes or taking semesters off. You can only take one consecutive semester off, meaning if you take a course in the summer, then you can take the fall off, and then you have to take a course in the spring. Or, if you take a course in the spring, you can take the summer off, but then you have to take a course in the fall. If you take two consecutive semesters off, the OMSCS program considers you no longer a student, and while you'll still keep your credits and completed courses, you will have to reapply to the program if you want to continue taking those courses. So, let's assume in this situation that you're staying in with one apply, meaning you never leave the program. In that case, you would take a class, one class, take a semester off, and then take another class. With that pattern, to finish the 10 courses, it would take you a total of seven years. So that's the minimum being two years and the maximum being seven years. Fifth, are there any pros or cons to starting the program in an off semester, meaning a spring semester? Personally, I haven't found any. The only one that could be considered one is if you take your first course in the spring, you get to take your second course in the summer, and summer courses, at least in my opinion, was they were a little bit easier because the timeline was shorter. But overall, there really doesn't seem to be any difference. It also is possible that it's easier to get in to Georgia Tech on an off semester, but I just don't know the true answer to that. Lastly, will I be going down to Georgia Tech on graduation day to pick up my diploma? Personally, no. I plan on having Georgia Tech mail me the diploma when I finish the program. When I was in my undergraduate, I did walk. It was a great experience and I would definitely recommend it for any of you guys who are still in your undergraduate. But for me, in my master's, I've already walked once. Georgia Tech is a bit of a hike to get to. So I'll just have them mail me my diploma instead of actually going to Georgia Tech to pick it up. So that was Q&A with Computer Guy Chris. If you guys like this video, let me know in the comments. And if you guys have any additional questions that I either didn't cover in this video or didn't cover in my other videos, let me know that in the comments as well, and I'll try to add it to the next video. Before I go, I again just want to thank Georgia Tech for this shirt. I really think it's a pretty cool shirt, and I love wearing it when I'm making these videos, and it really does make me feel like more of the Georgia Tech OMSCS community. So thanks again, guys. Leave a like, subscribe if you like the channel, and I'll see you next time.